Room Fair or? enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Linda's sideways now. I don't know why. Yeah, I'm trying to fix it. <laughs> Did you do that, Michael? Can you turn her back? <laughs> No, no, she has to do it. That's her. <laughs> oh, okay. That's she is. All right. We've been talking about uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. We've spent about three weeks there, and maybe we'll get through it today. But it um, talks about some people who are remembered for their faith. And as we said, it's kind of an expansion of the opening part of this chapter, which tells us what faith is. And so these sketches kind of define faith for us and uh, through example, and that's a useful thing sometimes. And so we covered the ones that were mentioned, then there was a list of them along about verse 32. And so we talked about those people too and how uh, the things that they did exemplified faith. And then uh, starting in verse 33, kind of a description of what faith had led to in the lives of many of these people. Uh, so they led to some great victories, conquering kingdoms, administering justice and uh, doing all of these great things, but also they were suffered some things. Um, I want to kind of focus on those words in the 34th verse. Weakness was turned to strength. That's what faith can do for us it can turn weakness into strength because we rely upon a higher power than ourselves. And we just, you know, we do the will of God and turn it over to God and he will bring about the results that he wants. And so sometimes those lead to notable results, but sometimes the faith that is evidenced, uh, verse 35, talks about some received people raised from the dead. And uh, that's a pretty powerful uh, evidence of faith, isn't it? Or a result of faith. But others were tortured, refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. Sometimes faith doesn't lead to a great victory. Sometimes it doesn't lead to a miraculous result. Sometimes it leads to suffering and even death. But that's still part of the definition of faith, isn't it? Launching out, we don't know what the result is. That's the essence of faith, isn't it? We launch out. We don't know if anybody's going to follow us. We don't know if somebody's going to be converted. We don't know what the result is going to be. And yet we stand forth for the truth of God and his word. And uh, if we knew, it wouldn't be faith. It would be based upon knowledge. Or, but... It, that's that's what God wants us to do, isn't it? It's like what <clears throat> um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said yeah. when they were um, going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. They said, "We we know that God can save us from it, yeah. but even if He doesn't, we're not going to bow yeah. down to you." Yeah. So their faith was was strong. And they were ready to face the consequence. And they knew that, well, God could save them, but he doesn't always. And that's yeah. not yeah. something that we can understand. You know, we wonder, well, you know, he saved those, but you know, why isn't he going to save me? 
and we, you know, is it because I don't have enough faith or what? But it's beyond our understanding, right. and I, we just have to continue to have faith. What's what is the most powerful testimony? Uh, sometimes it seems like if we win a great victory, if something great happens, uh, that that is the, a powerful testimony. But we don't appreciate that sometimes the way that we deal with suffering and adversity is an even more powerful testimony. I've said it before, but uh, I'll, ne I'll never forget uh, what uh, our missionary Jim Springer said to his uncle, whom his uncle, who was a member here, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. He said, you know, we hope for the best, but this may be the opportunity for you to give the most powerful testimony in your life. How are you going to deal with this adversity? What's your attitude going to be? What example will you set? And maybe that's a question we need to uh, ask ourselves sometime. You know, it may not be pancreatic cancer, but it may be some other challenge in our life. This may be an opportunity to give a powerful testimony, to show what faith really means. So anyway, that's what I wonder if that's why Sarah's, I mean, I struggle sometimes <clears throat> with the Sarah listing, you know, because when God told them that he was going to, you know, give her a child in her old age, she laughed. Yeah. Right? And, and, and when, as you read it, didn't believe it or, or what have you with, within that that's there. Yet she's listed here as believing, and when you get to the end, once she asked the baby, you know, she said, basically, how awesome is God who has made me that laugh, laughter for the world? Yeah. If you will paraphrase, you know, saying, God, everybody knows it was not uh, me. Yeah. That this had to be God that caused this child, so let me kind of be an example to, to the world. And maybe that's part of you know, her faith, you don't know what all her thoughts were. We only have certain yeah. things recorded, but clearly she was recorded in the Great Hall of Faith. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's another essence of faith we've talked about more on Wednesday night. <laughs> that how do we know what is God's hand in our life? How do we know what God has done and what just happened. I think that's part of the essence of faith is being able to look back in our lives and see what God has done for us. Oh, we can't, you know, prove it in a court of law, perhaps, that this that God gave me this blessing or that this happened to me in order to strengthen my faith or that this happened to me in order to advance God's kingdom in some way. But that's part of faith too, isn't it? To, to say, yeah, God, I give glory to God for these things in my life. I can't prove that it was God, but I see through the eye of faith, the hand of God in where I am. It's people I've met, experiences that I've had, so anyway, you know, we're always left with that question. Is it really God? <laughs> but uh, that's the essence of faith. Not really knowing, <laughs> if you will. Being, but being pretty sure. <laughs> anyway, give God the glory. Women received back the dead. Others were tortured, refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging while still others were chained and put in prison. And we talked about some of that. They were stoned. And, uh, you know, who was stoned? Stephen. Uh, Jeremiah describes another fellow, fellow prophet of his that was uh, threatened by the king. He went to Egypt. The king sent and brought him back and had him stoned. 
little incidents like that that we sometimes overlook. Uh, powerful testimony. They were sawed in two. Anybody saw it in two? Isaiah That's the Jewish death. tradition that Isaiah was put to death by being put in a hollow log and they sawed it in two. Well, what a way. But uh, it's mentioned here. And uh, they were put to death by the sword. Uh, everybody come to mind for that. One of the uh, apostles, James. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the prophets, Jezebel had many prophets killed. Uh, wore sheep skins and goat skins, kind of outcasts from society. To some, that would be the ultimate. This is to be kind of outcast from society. Some people are more uh, loners, but uh, I was visiting uh, visited Evangelical Free Church, you know, weeks ago last last year, and he brought up the idea that about the idea of the appearance of suffering. And that uh, suffering was glorified, suffering was glorified, and <coughs> um, uh, I I interacted with the man who was speaking. And I said, "Well, you know, um, in the second century, the church, you know, the, the, it took on a strange." Um, viewpoint that if, if the leaders weren't, you know, if, if you weren't marked up physically, you weren't tortured, like we see Patrick up here, we see, you know, we see Alan, we see Dan, but you know, you don't see the scars on them, okay, you know, and in some cases, they would look at you and question your leadership. If you did not have scars on your body, well, wow. okay, you know, this is the second century, uh, the second second century Christianity because they, yeah. they, 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 I and the leader were talking about this because yeah, you know, they, they, they focused on they focused on the suffering and not necessarily the inward, not necessarily the inward qualities, but what it meant to be into leadership and and really into leadership. And faithful to the Lord is that you have to suffer, and you know you have to somehow have that on your appearance as as a marking. Um, yeah. I'm not trying to say that's wrong. I'm just saying that you know. Well, we don't do that today. Not part of our cultural thinking. It was part of their right. Thing. So we're not into pain. Is it? None of us, right? None of us well, like pain. Yeah. I, uh, He's going to talk about the, that epidemic in our country lately. In the next chapter, he's going to say, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And uh, you have forgotten the word of encouragement. <laughs> but uh, that's, yeah, it, it's hard for us to imagine a Jesus of apostles going forth after being beaten and rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer in some manner like Jesus suffered. I'm not sure we would, some of us would have that attitude, would we be, if we, if we suffer, to give thanks that we are deemed worthy. God holds back that which we cannot bear. And we kind of congratulate ourselves, well, I haven't suffered. Maybe it's the Lord knows that our faith isn't strong enough to deal with that. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we're just a little softer, you know. We have a softer life in a lot of yeah. ways. Maybe they, that was just more easily accepted. You know? Maybe we need to be more confrontational as some of these prophets were. It's not Confront the devil. There always were some people of faith in high positions that escaped the worst 
Yeah. Program. That doesn't necessarily mean they were less faithful. Yeah, that's true. So, as we see, some people conquered kingdoms, others gave their lives. And we don't, that's part of faith. We don't know what God is doing with us always, but we need to stand up for him. Uh, what about in sheepskins and goatskins, the prophet Elijah comes to mind and uh, John the Baptist, uh, destitute, persecuted and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. <laughs> We're reminded uh, in the time of Ahab, uh, the prophet Obadiah hid a uh, hundred prophets in caves, 50 in one and 50 in the other. <laughs> uh, just little things you can read over, but uh, shows that there were those who were faithful to God, even in tough times, like under Ahab and Jezebel. Uh, these yeah, were all- I mean, they were used to that, you know, more of a rougher life, is what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. Today, what do we have? Central heating, a special <laughs> air conditioning, right? You know, food in our, our hand, you know, right, right near in the store, you know, all this stuff, it just, it softens us up a little. I'm just saying that we're, yeah. we're different today. Well, we don't yeah, take on this stuff. We have problem like I, I, I'm saying in general that we're comfortable that you know we can't be a part of a church service that doesn't have air conditioning. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, one of the Vietnamese leaders this was years ago. Okay, he he, he went on to uh, be with the Vietnamese uh, Methodist, but uh, he made a crack about how, how bad these goes. Yeah, it's dirty. The, the bathrooms were a long run down side. And they, they, they eventually remodeled, but the bathrooms, you know, the men's bathroom was, you know, the bathrooms were a lot, a lot, a lot. But what do you do when, you know, your church service is in a, in a barn, you know, or I can't remember her name, but she and her sister were arrested hiding, you know, hiding Jews. But you know they were having you know, but as a result they were having Bible study in the prison camp with fleas. You know, yeah, you know, that's not the most attractive thing. That you know, well, can we have Bible study with fleas? Okay, yeah. Yeah. you know, in it, it, you know, um, and the uh, well later she met one of the prison guards, one of the German prison guards, and he had converted over to Christ, and she. She had to embrace him because you know she paused, but she but she she did embrace him, you know, because he did surrender his life to Christ. Got her name. Yeah. Keep forgetting her name. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. The the new life, the new city, the city of God. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Only, how does that only with us, through Christ. They didn't and seen Christ, but these people have had the chance to see Christ. So anyway, I hope that kind of helps us to understand faith more. We'll all be challenged in some way. We may not be challenged to lead an army to victory. We may not be placed under arrest and tortured, but we're going to be challenged in our life uh, in some way. Maybe it's just a conversation with someone else. Maybe we need to stand up for Christ. Maybe we need to stand against something. Today, Christians are, to, are identified in society as people who are against things. And that's unfortunate. Christianity should be identified as people who are 
for things. But we are countercultural. You can't deny that yeah, Christ was a right. countercultural person. That's right. And we are taught to go against the culture in many ways, not always. So I think that's always going to stick. Yeah, we're following that's Christ. True. We're going to people going to see some negativity about us. We're not going to be for this, you know. We're not going to yeah. be for that. Yeah. We're going to be plus on that, plus on that. But there's always going to be negativity there. It's a part of life. And, uh, it's not how you approach it's having someone become saved, though. You're against the no. It's this is what. Yeah. We believe. Yeah. This is what. Yeah. Why. Yeah. So it's uh, as we re recall some of these examples, maybe that or. or in time of challenge, maybe we will recall some of these examples and we'll respond with greater courage or we'll see opportunities. Uh, that's that's what the message is for, isn't it? To help uh, people see opportunities and respond to them in a faithful way. Uh, God has planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. That's if we keep that in, in mind. That's that's what faith is, anyway, according to the 11th chapter. Any more comments on that? The 12th chapter is a, to a great degree about a, another concept. Uh, that's sometimes difficult. Discipline. God disciplines his children. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Who are these witnesses? People we've just been talking about for yeah. the last yeah. three weeks. Yeah. yeah. Are they watching us now? I believe they are. I, yeah, I would expect so. Think so. <laughs> I think they're up there. What is it? Waiting. I think there's a place of waiting for Christians until Christ comes again. I think they're up there watching. What do you? What does a witness do? Testifies. Testifies. <laughs> testifies. And so that's you know. These witnesses have testified by the manner in which they live. I don't know whether everybody up in the spiritual world is, is looking down on earth. What do you think about that? How would you feel if your uh, if if your parents, your relative, everybody that you ever knew was watching what you're doing? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if this is literal or figurative. Yeah, I don't know that it matters. I mean, for me. Okay. It's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. But okay. I think here he's referring back to all of the people that he just talked about. Yeah. But for me, I mean, I grew up as an athlete. I love being on the stage. I love the imagery of, now I think about the Roman Colosseum wow. and all of those <laughs> former, you know, people, the witnesses that have gone through everything that he just described, sitting and, and watching it, you know, for them at the time. But for me, I, that's what I think about. My grandparents and okay. those that I knew that have gone on before me, and sometimes it's an encouragement, you know, that that says, "Hey, they've done it. I can do it," which is kind of yeah. what Hebrews eleven is about. But other times, for me, it's a point of accountability, you know, that I, that I sit back and think, "What would my granddaddy think if he watching me yeah. yeah. right now? Would he be happy and pleased with what I'm doing, or would he?" <clears throat> be scowling or disappointed, you know. Right, and most of the time, but uh, but I mean, visually, it is. I think it's just how whether it's figurative, literal, I, I don't know. Yeah. But for me, I like to think about it literally. We think about those who've gone before, and uh, as you say, uh, you know, we, we hate to do something that would disappoint people that we have known, uh, we want to live up to their ideals. No one is, is perfect, but, uh, but the, the testimony, I think, is the word there, the witness. But I think if you think about that in light of 
uh, whether it was a parable or a, a true story about uh, Abraham's bosom okay. that was there and those that were looking down. They weren't looking to condemn. Right. You know, they were looking to say, send, send somebody back. You know, oh, brother regardless of where you are and waiting, and that's what you're doing. I, I think everybody there wants all of us who are here to get to the right place. Yeah. So I think that they're only, the cloud of witnesses are only encouraged. I think they're foods. Yeah. That they're they're yeah. wanting us to, to do well. I just want to know sometimes it's more meaningful to us if we think about someone we've known, but God sees everything. And that's <laughs> even more important. God knows what we're doing, not only what we're doing, but what we're thinking. And uh, it can be very sobering to us. It can be very sobering. <laughs> but it uh, can also be a comfort that God knows what we're going through sometimes. And wants the best for us, as you say, not seeking to condemn. And I, think, I think we're to look to Jesus, so that's kind of the finish, yeah. right? So yeah. It, but it's nice to have, you know, think about the people that are doing the Chicago Marathon. It's nice to have people on the side of the streets encourage them or giving them water or supplement or whatever as they're on, on the journey. The image of athletics is here. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. There's the athletic uh, event competition, I guess. But uh, it's, in athletics in the world, there's only one winner. <laughs> but... I want to run the race where everyone can win. <laughs> That's the, the beauty of uh, the, the race that he's talking about here. Everyone can win. Uh, makes you want to do something, doesn't it? <laughs> As we read these verses, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Keep your eye on the finish line, <laughs> I guess who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. <clears throat> so uh, the sin that entangles just as some things could entangle you if you're in, you know about athletics, uh, you want the right diet, the right exercises. I don't know as much about that as some others, but uh, <clears throat> consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And, you know, that's kind of why we have the Lord's Supper, isn't it? to consider in that special way uh, Jesus and his opposition so that we do not go weary um, and lose heart. There's a Rudolf Bultman that he was a like after World War II uh, he, he, he was a would consider the wealthy of religion. And Boltman was, uh, Boltman would argue and say, well, we have these pictures and these pictures instill faith in us. Okay. Um, I think he rejected the historicity, although he would not probably say that he rejected the historicity of the, the stories um, that we have recorded here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, his his idea would be like you know like you go to the art you know art museum and you see a picture and you're motivated by that picture he would argue this but what I'm trying to say is that and likewise the Hebrew writers teach you say yeah we have these pictures in the Bible but our pictures these pictures are based upon history and you know time and space rather than just you know a, 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 a 
18 can't be used again. Okay. Yeah. In your struggle against sin, and it is a struggle, isn't it? <laughs> you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. He's writing to Jewish Christians from what we can understand. Uh, and you have forgotten that word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. And so these are some words that, you know, we can find various sources in the Old Testament. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. So that's my prayer from sometimes to God. Don't give up on me, Lord. Keep disappointing me because that's, then I know you care. Then I know, you, you know that I can do better. So uh, these are, well, we can look at maybe one of Psalm 119 uh, about the word of God. Verse 67 is one of these sources. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. That, that puts it in a, kind of a clear way, isn't it? Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. You got my attention. Uh, every verse of the 119th Psalm has a reference to the word of God in some way, but anyway. Um, so God uses pain and discipline to make us better. I think that's what he's saying. Yeah. All through here. And he still does it today in some ways. Yeah. Uh, we don't like pain and discipline, but sometimes we need it, unfortunately. In Proverbs, the writer says, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke, because the Lord disciplines those he loves as fathers, the son he delights in, as a father. James uh, one fourteen, kind of like that psalm says, that each of us are led astray when lured by our own temptations yeah. or desires or, or what have you. How do you know when the Lord is disciplining you? <laughs> I don't think we always know. We don't always know. Sometimes I think it's pretty clear. You know, he might bring something into our lives that unexpected and eventually it, it leads us in a better way you know it strengthens us maybe it's something we have to overcome but it's hard to tell it's, it's hard to tell but that's part of the, one of the parts of faith the essence of faith is looking at something and saying is God trying to tell me something here maybe we something that we really wanted doesn't happen or maybe uh, something bad <laughs> happens. And if we have the faith that we've been talking about, we ask ourselves the question, yeah, or is it something, it's easy to just get mad. Get mad at the world, and get mad at other people, get mad at God. But do we have the faith to say, is God trying to tell me something through this? Maybe he wants me to go a different direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, I don't <laughs> you always know. I mean, and I mean, maybe I'm, you know, over uh, estimating. And I think that's the part that. So when you have a relationship with the Lord through Christ, yeah. and you know, um, He doesn't want you to, to, to go astray. Like that, that's a good yeah. word. Um, I just think you always know, and that's a part of giving God the glory. So, like, if you give God the glory for everything that happens in your life, whether good or bad. You know what he's trying. I think it stands okay. out even more when he's trying to get your attention. Okay. We have. I mean, in order to rebuke the flesh, things have to hurt. You know what I mean? That's yeah. the flesh part. Yeah. But your spirit is being refined, <clears throat> developed, all purified, and that's what's you know more important. So, in other words, it makes a long story short. What I'm trying to say is, I 
for me, I, don't know, I would like to think that I always know, and that's kind of the humbling part about it. It's like I know better. You know what I mean? Like, okay. I'm, and, the, and one thing here's, here's what I'm to say actually: God's going to get the glory for everything. So certain certain situations, the natural. You're, I think he's going to. He always puts us in positions where we have to see with our even with our logic, this couldn't have happened. There's no way this could have happened except unless it was God. Yeah. Because logically, this sequence of events doesn't make sense. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I feel like that's how he gets our attention for us to know, okay, I'm trying to give you some grace and give you a chance to, you know, this this hurt, this was terrible, yeah. but, but you got a way out. Next time, don't, you know, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm trying to do better. something a little different. I've had plenty of situations in my life. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah I, I might feel a little emotion, but, you know, I've had a health situation uh, a couple of years ago. Now I'm facing another one. Yeah. And that's something that I'm asking myself is because, you know, where did these things come from yeah. that are, you know, in my body? And did I do something? Is God punishing me <clears throat> for something that I, I mean, I know I've tried to live my life in a good way yeah, yeah. for the last what, 40 years or so. But, you know, we all make mistakes. But, you know, there were things in my past that I'm, you know, I'm not proud of. And that's what I, I'm asking myself. Is God punishing me with these afflictions in my body for something that I did in the past? And it, it kind of bothers me. <laughs> and you know, and then I think, some, well, maybe I deserve it. Those things that I, you know, it, it's just. Yeah, I respond to that uh, because sure, I, I feel like, you know, it's easy to think that way. You know, sometimes these things yeah. happen, but I think we have to remember that God allows things, whether we see them good or bad, to strengthen <laughs> our faith. Right. It may be that he sees very good things. So he's allowing things and he knows you might, you know, that faith, something about your faith, he might. That's what he desires. Well, it's, it's testing. I was, no, I understand. I understand. I'm, I'm, but I certainly wouldn't. I mean, I don't know you personally, but I feel like I wouldn't take that approach. I would say he's punished because he sees you. From, I mean, just the short amount of time I've been here, you've been all, you know, been out faithful all this. So I would assume that there's something. He wants a closer relationship. Yeah. That's what I feel yeah. he desires, yeah. first and foremost. So whatever's going to, maybe you might pray more fervently because of these situations. Otherwise, you wouldn't, you know what I mean? And it, might, it doesn't, that's why, like, when we think in the, our natural way of thinking, right, it's not going to fly when it comes to what God says in our relationship. We have to let the Holy Spirit work on us. It's a totally different yeah. what it's a thought process. Dare I say it's like the opposite. So I feel like he wants, sometimes he wants a closer relationship. All the time he wants a closer relationship. He wants stronger faith. Sometimes it might mean your mom has to be in the hospital. That, that means you guys are praying as a family. Somehow you notice those things bring the family together. Those things, bring, you know, that situation might bring glory, you know, glory to God that others might need to yeah. see, much like we just read in Hebrews 11. You know, yeah. those folks did not reach the goal, but it's for us. We're reading about it now, right? So it's like some things are for, you know, he has to glorify himself so that others can see, okay, this is not, uh, this yeah. is not ordinary stuff here. God is, you know, so I know, I'm just saying there's more than one way to do it. I know. Who knows what was prepared in the hospital for you to meet them? Or who yeah. knows? Right. I mean, I mean, Alan had a really interesting conversation with his oncologist lately. That it was so random that they got to talk about Christianity <laughs> with his checkup. Right? Yeah. Reading was reading I just a book happened and they, to be reading a book and he asked what it was. I felt early Christian literature and we got to talking about it. Did you pick it up in the exchange here? Yeah. You I got a free book out here. <laughs> And that was really, and we got to talk. Oh, you know, I'm a Christian, and we, uh, we known him for a couple years now. Yeah, yeah. You know, got to talk, and I said, "You can see me on YouTube." So they <laughs> took it down. I'll just... see next time if he ever did that. But, <laughs> it was I uh, mean, uplifting. Oh, and he said he prays for his patients every morning. Yeah. Well, what a rich, oh, nice thing, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, you you would see this guy. I would never have known him. If without the book, you wouldn't have been talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, we can always torture ourselves about the past. I think the question that we to answer is what what is God trying to get, do for me now? You know, 
sin, past sins are forgiven. You know, said babies are sure. born with cancer. Babies are born and die. It's, it's, yeah. You can't possibly have sin. You can't, you know. Well, it's, 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 sometimes it's, there's it's, consequences. You know, we uh, you if we deny. abuse our bodies, there's going to be some consequences mm -hmm. to that. But uh, and I think it's also, and I think your comment that <clears throat> that allows things to, to happen. Uh, some things he may cause to happen. Some mm -hmm. things, you know, he, he allows to happen. You know, this world is not our own. Yeah. So I have to remember that. And, you know, if we in this room, because we believe we're protected and sheltered for everything and from it, there may be many people that, that come to believe, but they believe for their own reasons. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that's there. So I don't, I don't know exactly everything that you've got going on, but I'm, I'm sorry. We will certainly keep praying for you. But mm -hmm. I, I know this about you. I know your faith is going to shine through. Mm -hmm. No matter what you're facing, not just to us, but to, to other people that see you. And you're, whatever it is, you're going to be. I know that about you. I would encourage you to see this upcoming surgery as a test. God's testing you. Testing you, me. It's really and, scary. Uh, it can be a strengthening thing to go through it. You know, it's not fun to go through it, but, you know, things sometimes there's sunshine on the other side. And, Just uh, for you, you'll be there too. You'll be I'll, interacting with the team. I'll be there right with her, but. They're not going to do surgery on me. So. But you're, but you're there. You're part. a Christian in, in the mix, you know. So. But, uh, I feel that I, I have a closer relationship with God after what I went through <laughs> a couple years ago. So. That's why it's a job. It, it, here's the, you know, verse 7. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Uh, moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirits and live? So I think that's the relevant question. What what can this do for me <laughs> physically, but and also spiritually? I think you also have to think about context in, in this. And so, okay, with what they were going through at this time, what did they need to hear? Yeah, you know, this what this was going on, they were being uh, persecuted, they were facing challenges, they were facing all of this, and to hear. The message in this particular way, as compared to if they were on top of the world, yeah. he probably would have been giving them a speech about humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, you know, and he will lift you up versus being too, too haughty with with this man. And, and, you know, how do you stay in balance through the, the ups and downs of, of, of life? Uh, this. <laughs> Just read another book about the uh, what was going on in Palestine and the years before 70 AD for decades actually rebellion was going on and there was tremendous conflict and tremendous suffering and uh, perhaps that's some of the hardship that he's talking about there Christians kind of caught in the middle. Uh, if, if you read some of the accounts, they'll say, um, the, the Romans slaughtered 10,000 Jews here, 20,000 there. It's just almost unbelievable. Uh, and, and so there were hardships of various kinds. But. Uh, hey, Alan, we don't have to be dead to be in the cloud of witnesses. I just no. that. <laughs> That's right. You know, and we're <laughs> Talking about the card that he had got in the first card, he did, and what that meant to him from an encouragement. Yeah. Right. I think about Peyton this morning. I got she it. called me off to the side and was like, so complimentary to my song leading today and the song choices. <laughs> oh, made a couple, you know, I, I, think, I think we could be 
you know, even today, a cloud of witnesses to be encouraging, to, to cheer on, to lift up when you need to, to, yeah. to lift yeah. up. We don't have to wait until we're dead. I want you to continue those thoughts, Steve, yeah. because we're not going to be here next week, but Steve is going to be taking the class, uh, so you'll, you'll hear some more wisdom from him, <laughs> and I appreciate that. We'll be in San Diego for a medical meeting. Oh, wait, it's two hours behind then. There's daylight savings, too. It's going to be like 6.30. <laughs> <laughs> Much light up. They're taking mud boots with you. I had a lot of mud. <laughs> In San Diego? Yeah, they had a lot of rain out there. Now uh, you can stand aside a lot. Yeah. Dry spots. Oh, I'm going to do that. Oh, you can bounce my brain. I'm going to get